Hi, this is TK Kugler from Wasabi Venture Stables. You know, one of the things that I get asked often um, by new club members or just uh, people who are fans um, who have never really owned a thoroughbred racehorse is which horse should I choose? Um, now, obviously, the simple answer is, well, you should choose one that wins a lot. And, um, but that's, uh, you have to understand in, in this game, um, only the very best horses ever win more than about 20% of the races that they're in. Um, and the average horse probably wins closer in the single digits if they ever win at all. And, uh, that's a really important fact to understand. And, uh, so that's the, that's the first thing is, is that you can't, you can't just obviously say, I'm just going to choose the best horse. There's countless people throughout history that thinks they were choosing the best horse. So let's take that off the table. Let's think about the types of horses that you want. Remember, this is an entertainment um, game. This is, this is what we're, we're playing an entertainment uh, uh, exercise here. This is not primarily driven to make a profit. That's not the primary reason you're going to be in the thoroughbred racing business. If it is, then you're going to be disappointed is what I would tell you. Now you can you can be a part of it and think of it um, and try to execute so that you have a better shot at getting a profit or at least your money back or some money back. That's really what we try to do at Wasabi Venture Stables. So um, since it's an entertainment, what kind of entertainment do you want? So let's let's take that in a couple forks right now and, and see if we can give you a good answer to the to the question of which horse should I choose? So first of all, many people want to choose a horse that's going to race somewhere near where they are so that they can go see that horse when it races. Um, that makes perfect sense. Um, at, at the stables, we try to have uh, in-person events. We also try to have in-person backside events so that you can actually go see it training in, in the morning and visit it in the back of the, in the barn area. Um, those are all things that we try to do. So that makes perfect sense. Understand, though, that when you choose a horse in the racing business, um, they move around. So um, it, unless you're dealing with the lowest of low-level horses, most horses are going to move around in their career. The, the, more, the better the horse, actually, the more there's a chance that they're going to move around. Um, so understand that saying, oh, I only want the horse to run in Maryland, or I only want a horse that's going to run in Delaware, um, that's probably not really a realistic option. Um, just understand that. Um, you can choose one that probably is going to stay close by, but no one can promise you it's going to stay in one place. So beyond that, what other types of things should you care about? So first of all, I would say it would depend on how, if you're looking for instant action, I'm going to buy into a horse that's going to race very soon, then you should do a claiming horse, a horse that gets claimed. And usually within three to four weeks, um, you're going to get right back into a race. The problem with most claiming horses is, is that you're dealing with a horse where the market has pretty much figured out what this horse is worth. It's not, it's very rare that you're going to claim a horse and it's magically going to be worth five, six, seven times what it is. It just, that doesn't happen. In most cases, the value actually goes down from when you claim it. Um, you can hope you steal a win and uh, and hopefully get out the horse um, very quickly. Um, and that is a key aspect to claiming horses. Um, and really all thoroughbred racehorses in North America. Understand that you're buying into a horse that you hope, you hope, gets claimed. You hope at some point that that horse ends up in someone else's hands and they pay you for it. Because the vast majority of horses end up at a place where you have to pay to retire the horse. So from a fiscal um, play, you're really hoping that you can win and get the horse claimed away from you. That's That would be the perfect turnout. So let's say though that you're looking more for a horse that's gonna stick around for a little while. Well then you would probably, in our case, you're gonna to wanna to buy into our yearlings. When you buy into a yearling, you're, you're gonna be with that horse for a while. That horse is not um, barring something going very wrong, um, which we never hope for, obviously, but it does happen. Um, th that horse is going to be with us for 18 to 24 months, no matter what. And uh, that gives you a chance to to be a part of that horse for a while um, once you've bought in. Um, now, the, the trick to yearlings is that they're more expensive than claiming horses in most cases. 
um, you, you're, you're looking at a significantly larger investment, um, you know, probably uh, three, four hundred dollars um, for a one percent sort of stake in a horse, maybe more, um, depending on uh, how it all plays out. Um, where you can get into claiming horses for one percent for you know 150 bucks in in many cases um so it just depends once again so there's the other thing about uh buying into a yearling um you're buying a little bit of a lottery ticket here you, we don't know what the horse is it could go off and be a wonderful stakes horse or it could be sort of a clunker and never really amount to anything no one knows um, but it does give you that chance of an upside. You know, we, of course, do our homework and we try to do the best we can to, to, to choose horses that are going to be good. Um, now let's flip on to another fork in the road of what you might be looking for. A lot of people enjoy the breeding aspect of this business. Um, the ability to buy into an individual foal, watch that foal get born, be a part of the pedigree selections, um, learn from that, and then watch that horse get sold. Um, and then eventually go off and race, and they might race for someone else. But that a lot of people like that. Um, many people think about the breeding side as more of an investment. So once again, I don't want you to think of any of this as an investment um, per se, um, but it does feel a little more like an investment because you're buying an asset and you're hoping that it sells for more money. Um, that's that's really what the breeding side is all about. So those are those are some of the things to think about which horse you should choose. Uh, at the end of the day, the moral of the story, though, is, is this is entertainment, and you should enjoy the entertainment and educational value that comes with being a thoroughbred owner. I hope that helped.